Welcome back guys on yet another video. You are actually joining me at the end of the video. Right now the job we're about to attempt, I've already completed it. I wanted to do the intro at the end because I wasn't sure I'm going to succeed in this one. What I'm going to do today is repair the AC, well the tube in the car and fix the AC. Will I succeed or not? I'll tell you something. Let's look under the car and see if we have moisture under the car. We do have moisture under the car. That means the AC has worked. Watch this video till the end and make sure to subscribe to, so we can reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. With that in mind, let's start the video. T40 to remove those two screws. Let me show you where they are. There is one over here. There is another screw just over there. I am trying to take this screw out, but it's not coming out whatsoever. Now, I know I don't need the pipe anymore, so I think I'm going to cut the pipe and then maybe I'll have better access to the screw. Should have done that a long time ago before I rounded it. So it is a few days later and now I want to show you how I rounded the screw. It's completely rounded and damaged. I bought this box hoping to fix the uh, screw. I'm going to treat it as a bolt and I'm going to pick maybe 16 millimeter and try to use this to take it out. I don't know if it's gonna work, let's give it a try. So I think it's working, let's see. Oof. That's what it does, it just grips it and that's what happened to the screw. I'm actually liking this product, I really, really like it. Totally worth it. If you guys are interested in this product, I will definitely put a link on it on the description below. It's, uh, it's one of those things that you don't need, but when you need, Trust me, you need. This is one of those tools. Because I need to reach that bolt, it's very difficult. I need to remove this piece of trim, the plastic. As you can see, with the trim removed, I can get a much better access to the screw over here. That's where the gas was leaking. There's a big hole here. Hmm. We will say the manufacture date, which is as old as the car, 17th of June 2009. How cool is that? letting you know in case you wanted to do this job it comes with its own sensor and with the valve and of course the shredder for the high uh, I think it's called high pressure and also it comes with the rubbers on both ends so one here also one here I put the the pipe in I put the screw all trims are back since that bolt is finished and everything is finished from there. So I managed to buy new screws for the radiator. You can't buy individual. You have to buy a pack of 10. And uh, this is the number for it, the part number, if you wanted to know. What I'm about to do now is up to you if you want to attempt something like this, okay? There are a lot of regulations and things can go wrong uh, quickly. So things could escalate really uh, badly, really quick. So, what I'm about to do next, you can learn from it, but take it as an experience, don't take it as a DIY. This is, by all means, is not a how-to video. This is a not, I'm not trying to teach you how to do these things, I'm just showing you what I'm up to and how, uh, how, how I'm doing it. If, if you want to do it yourself, of course, feel free to take the risk of, of doing it.
I hope you guys have enjoyed that montage of opening the product and uh, displaying the product. This is a proper gas, okay, with some additives. You can see on the bottle, I don't need to explain to you, but there are some uh, additional additives to it. But it's not additives like it, it's not dye, it's not something to fix the leak or anything like that. It's just like a bit of oil. Think of it, gas with oil. And the ratios of the gas and oil, it's in the behind the bottle. I forgot about it, but we'll get that uh, about that later. And then I bought this from Amazon. This is, if I look closely, it does say a replacement but this one is a environmentally safe gas slightly different it's equivalent to the gas that we need to use which is the r134a by the way so this car takes 700 gram this pump will withdraw the uh, water uh, that was and the moisture that it was in the system so because i have not had uh, air in the system for a very long time and I've had it exposed to the weather so I need to use this okay so now I have this turned on we're in the open position and this one is in the open position this one here is in the open position and that was also in the open position and I have the, uh, the pump, the vacuum pump turned on so now that it has been 15 minutes you can see here it's minus 30 and this one is also minus 30 what's gonna happen next is I'm going to turn this off okay. in theory this should stay minus 30 and this should stay minus 30 for the next 15 minutes so i'll tell you what i'll come back in the next 15 minutes maybe between 15 to 20 maybe 30 minutes i'll come back and check if we still have it at minus 30 and minus 30 that confirmed to us there is no leak in the system okay that's that's a confirmation for us there's no leak in the system because you can see the system it's under well it's not under pressure it's the opposite of that it's not over pressure, what is it? It's under vacuum, that's what I wanted to say. It has a vacuum. And if I can pull a vacuum on the system, that means I have no leak. Good news, guys. So, the pump has obviously been off for about 20, 20 ish minutes. And if we look closely here, everything's still connected. And let's take a look at the reading minus 30, minus 30. How cool is that? That's done. Good morning, guys. It is the next day. I have removed the pump and the cables, but I have not actually, well, I kept them in a close position. I put it away last night and in the morning I put them back and I turn on the, the knobs and everything. Uh, I have not turned on the pump, but look, so everything is connected still and I still have a vacuum in the system. So since I have a vacuum in the system all night long, that tells me that the system is definitely, definitely not leaking, hopefully. <laughs> so. Uh, we have no issue in the system here and it, it is safe for us to actually uh, put gas but it's how to put the gas and how much to put the gas that's the biggest question now for now I'm gonna turn this on for one hour and come back and visit it again and see uh, what's going on it has been about an hour and a half now still we have minus 30 so what we're going to do now is we're gonna close this we're gonna close this off. The next step for us to do would be to connect the gas and to fill the car. But before we do so, I remember one of uh, the subscribers said that you need to clear a fault code if there is this warning light, which I do not have it, but I need to check the system. If there's a warning light, it will tell the compressor, don't turn on. So let's just check the ECU. I could use the IDD tool from Gap, which by the way, I've made a video about it. It's right over here and I will put a link for it in the description if you wanna have a look on this uh, diagnostic tool and what it does. As well as I have made another video on King Bolin and you know what? Uh, both of these products do work and I've explained to you a video on how what is the difference between them and etc And by the way, I made another video I'll put it in the description for you to see the difference between them and if it's worth investing in this one and this one However in this one there are only two things that you can do with the car So it resets comes for free the rest you have to pay So what they did actually 
they watched the video and then they sent me another product this is the full lot and this uh, unlocks everything so everything in this there are about 15 uh, resets that you can do it different it's different from car to a car what you can do and cannot do by the way and that's what i was saying to you about this one this is specifically for land rover this this actually right now is been locked to this car so this is specifically for this car however these are generic i can use them for the porsche or whatnot this will do more than not i know i know for a fact that i can do it with this one but today to show you i'm gonna use this device to try and clear that code or to see if there is any code so uh, let's go inside and have a look. So right now it's showing me that I have an error code in HAVOC. HAVOC is, stands for Heating, Ventilation and Air Conditioning Control Module. That's the air quality sensor. Uh, well, two of them. It's B102E11 and then B102E12. What I can do is I can clear uh, the fault memory okay, on that one and that has cleared it it said successful i'm gonna use all of this bottle and then if i do 700 minus 425 that would be what would be alex well done that would be 275 so we're going to use 275 or what is equivalent of 275 uh, of the 453 so we're going to do a bit of calculations and then see how much actually how many gram is going to be minus what I forgot to do, actually, I forgot to turn the car on. So typical me, I forgot to turn the car on, but it's good that we didn't put a lot of gas. It was just a little bit of gas. So I turned the car on and what I'm going to do, woof, the AC is already working. Just a little bit of gas. Okay, I'm going to put it on the maximum, uh, the coldest, the, uh, on the coldest, and this is on, on the coldest. I'm going to put the fan on one, okay? And uh, I'm going to, yeah, just do that basically. So, so the AC kicks in basically. Uh, and uh, I want to see how cold this will get. Let me get a thermometer actually and plug it in here. So right now the thermometer is reading about 15, maybe 14 degrees. Let's see if we can get it even colder by of course putting the gas inside. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to release some gas again slowly, slowly. So I'm going to just do it in 15 second in increment. So basically I don't, well, I, if I'm doing something wrong, I can back up really easily. Uh, and I don't damage any of the tubes or anything like that. But I can see the pressures are really working with me really well so far, no issue. And um, we're getting there. Let's do it one more time. So we're still on the first bottle, but check this out. It went down to about five or six degrees. Remember it was 15, five, six degrees. And I'm still on the first bottle. Like it is ice cold right now, but we're gonna move even further. We're gonna take it further down. Let's see, let's see if we can manage actually. Most importantly, not to break the system, but it's looking good so far. This bottle has 168 grams of uh, hydrocarbon replacement well, i don't know why he's saying that it's it's the air conditioning stuff 168 grams but it's equivalent of 453 of the r134a as we explained before so that means for every two point i have the notes on uh, on the phone here for every 2.7 gram uh, of r134 it's equivalent of one gram of this whatever it's inside it so, in theory, uh, we need 275 gram of R134A of this bottle, 275. That means it's equivalent of uh, roughly, roughly, not exactly, uh, of 101.9 gram. Let's say 100 gram. We need 100 gram of from here to fill the gas. Okay. If I put this one with everything on it, it's 300, let me see, 300, what's going on, 308, let's make it, to, once this one is 200 and, well it's reducing, let's say 
205. Once this one is 205, we'll stop the process. Okay, once it's 205, we'll stop the process. I'm doing it slowly, slowly. I could speed it up maybe, but I'm doing it slowly, slowly on purpose to make sure it's all good. We're getting there and it reached, so I'm gonna stop it. The car is freezing. I'm dropping to 2.5. Oh, now it's like one degrees, almost zero degrees AC. I mean, should we greedy and fill some more or that is it? Oh, it's almost zero, almost zero. I think that is it. I think we should leave it there. What do you think, Alex? Yeah. Should we leave it to there yeah. or do some more? No, leave it to there. Leave it, not be greedy, yeah? No. Oh, I think I heard the AC kicking in. Yeah, that's zero. I am slightly, only like maybe 10 gram under, which in the, in the, on the, on the sticker it says 10 gram more or less, it's okay. Um, I'm not gonna be greedy. I have great AC, it reached a temperature at zero, so I'm happy about that. I don't need more. Um, and I will leave it to that. Let's go for a drive to make sure that the AC is actually working. Let's cut to the drive. I've just turned on the gap tool and you can tell that the compressor is turned on and that's how much pressure it is. Uh, we don't have the AC on maximum, I'm honest with you. If I put on maximum, maybe it will keep on kicking and it will be more. Okay, 41, here you go, 45. I think that's, that's great. I think for what we need, it's perfect. Wow, it's super cold. And now here, at five, and now they'll put it on max AC. It was dropping to zero, so I think if it drops to zero, that's perfect. That's good enough for us. Uh, but I think I want to, yeah, I think I want to do one more thing. Uh, but, oh, look, 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 look. Well, 190. It's going 200. up. Yeah. 200. Air conditioning system pressure. This is the system pressure. 216, 221. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's exactly what we need. Okay, perfect. So based on the temperature, we've checked the schedule online and it says that the temperature should be between 125 to 35, 135, which is great because that's what we have. And with that in mind, uh, with that in mind guys, make sure to subscribe, like and comment your thoughts about the job uh, below and make sure to help me reach the 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, that was uh, a well job done. Don't try this at home because you may fail. It's only me who'll succeed, apparently. See you guys on the next one. Bye bye. And we all got dreams. We all want things. But what you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? And do you believe?